Good afternoon. Um, <clears throat> this is a sort of brief PwC uh, panel thoughts. We wanted to give you some feedback from the field, um, from our client experiences, and kind of what we're seeing in the in the healthcare landscape. Again, my name is Walter Oshansky. I'm with our healthcare investment banking group here in PwC. And the topic that I'm going to cover is uh, mergers and acquisitions and sort of valuations. Um, so I, I cover the providers, payers, and healthcare IT. Um, by and large, the most M&A activity is in the provider universe. Uh, that would be you know, hospitals, but probably more often it's uh, physician groups and a number of the specialties you'd find in physician groups. But by default, um, because of the consolidation, there's a need for IT platforms and assistance in sort of supporting physicians in their, um, if, if you've read about MACRA, MACRA is gonna present a plus or minus 9% up or down uh, payment for many, many of these physicians. So they're getting their arms around how they're, gonna, how they're gonna accomplish this, how they're going to accomplish this from an IT perspective and from an operations perspective. Um, on the, in the payer universe, you've probably have seen uh, a bunch of large payer deals announced that did not go through. In terms of membership, there's likely not going to be many deals going forward. Um, <clears throat> and then in the healthcare IT world, uh, the name of the game is about valuations. If you start with Teladoc, if you look at revenue multiples, Teladoc revenue multiples are about 10 times. Um, for smaller IT platforms, it's probably not that high. Uh, activity is very robust, and again, the provider space is probably the most active. So, Clay. Uh, hi, Clay Hale. I'm in the healthcare dealers practice. I kind of pick up where Walter uh, leaves off, which is you know once a deal is consummated or during consummate uh, consummation, I go through and do the due diligence and do the integration work, which is actually taking the strategy and the concept that precipitated the deal and actually making it work. And, and what we're seeing both with strategic buyers and financial buyers is they're really, they're really uh, more open to embracing technologies that make things more efficient because especially on uh, the financial sponsor side, they're having to pay such high multiples. They've got to extract additional value through operational improvements. So I'm seeing you know, whether it's, you know, physician staffing or whether it's, you know, medical transport or, you know, uh, hospitals, they're much more open to, to having technology partners who are coming in with something new and innovative that, that makes their uh, business run more efficiently. Yeah, I'm, I'm um, just on. I'm uh, Doug Mears and part of the uh, healthcare deals practice nationally um, with PwC. And, um, I sort of deal in the middle here, um, sort of assist a lot of organizations from a strategy, <clears throat> excuse me, a strategy perspective, and at the same time, really um, thinking about uh, you know what's happening. I happen to live in Washington D.C., but uh, don't hold that against me. Um, but you know, a as we look at the changes, especially some of the changes that were discussed by the last panel, you know, the real need by our clients or what our clients are most interested in is how to do more with less. I mean, the bottom line is we're all looking at how are we going to provide more services and the highest quality services more efficiently. So as we look at how deals and how affiliations and partnerships uh, connect, it's really about how to take and leverage all the, all the services that are being provided um, today in such a way that we can indeed do more with less um, in the future. So that's where we spend a lot of time really bearing down on what, what makes sense from a partnership, an affiliation, a full out merger perspective. And then how do, how do all the various infrastructure pieces, facility pieces, and all of the rest uh, fit in to the remaining organizations to accomplish those goals. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Yasin Turkan. Uh, I am a director here in New York with PwC Strategy and um, I lead our firm's offers around uh, customer strategy with payers. Uh, what that means is the most things that I focus on around what you guys do, consumer experience, consumer engagement, as well as um, I happen to also focus on the go-to-market strategies for payers. Um, what I wanted to talk about is um, a trend that we've been seeing recently a lot um, and some problems that it is causing as well as the opportunities that come along with that problem. 
Um, the trend is something that I'm sure everyone is very familiar with, uh, which is a medical cost pressure uh, with the payers. And um, but what's specific about it that, that we recently came across a lot with payers is um, they, they're having some pressure to introduce some more complex products. Think about like um, tiered network products uh, where they have to pay, people have to pay different co-pays, co-insurances for different providers they go to. Um, and of course the problem that comes along with it is the complexity in the insurance uh, product and uh, people's everyday lives. And when you couple that with the, um, the health literacy, right? I mean, I'm sure everyone knows here how high the health literacy in the US is. Um, just a recent survey found that only 4% of people can define correctly the four big um, health insurance terms, copay, coinsurance, deductible, and out-of-pocket maximum. So when you couple that with the newly complex products, obviously you're, you're looking at very unhappy people. Um, so um, obviously to the solution to this problem uh, comes in different dimensions, right? One of them is um, just over-educating people and, and actually educating them at the right time and, and with the right medium and methods that they want, they would feel comfortable with and, and more effective. Um, the second one is the consumer transparency solutions. I'm sure you guys all know the, you know, the usual suspects in the market and, you know, people are making a lot of strides into creating more user-friendly, consumer-friendly um, solutions to the transparency. I believe someone was asking the question uh, in the last panel. Um, but my favorite one is, the, my favorite opportunity is actually, again, uh, a topic that was briefly discussed in the previous panel, which is what I call interventions, or um, the adoption boosters is, is what I'm calling. Um, and, and just to go a little bit deeper into that, um, obviously no one is waking up in the morning excited about using their insurance, right, health insurance. So, um, so the issue here is um, a recent study that we did with one of the payers is actually ju just about this, right? So they were trying to come up with better consumer experience for their now even more complex health insurance product. And what we came up with was we literally laid out the entire consumer journey and identified what are the interventions that we can find to really boost the adoption of their transparency solution. The, the solution itself is obviously one thing, right? You need to make that really, really cool and user friendly. But um, just an example, we found 57 intervention points that you can intervene and really boost the adoption of the, of, of the tool that they're using. And considering that you know, not any health tool currently in the market has more than even 30% awareness rate, you know, that just went a long way and, and hopefully you know, next year they're gonna uh, implement and, and see the, the benefits of it. But the real learning is, I, I think for everyone in the, in the room here, um, regardless of if it is a startup side or, or the buy side, um, I think you know, it's really important to think about just a broader journey and not just the, the solution itself and how we can really make healthcare better for everyone. So I'll be here for the networking session if you, anyone wants to talk about it more. Yeah, and we're purposely not gonna take questions so we can be available in the cocktail hour. If we keep going, we'll miss that. Um, but I would encourage you to engage us in conversation. We love talking to startups and folks in the industry and sharing what we know. So it's Walter, Clay, Doug, and Yasin. Thank you very much.